ladies and gentlemen, you know, I'm on my um, Android, so just bear with me on this one. Whenever I come across certain stories, it may be really difficult for me to do initially. And the reason why it is, is because of sometimes people don't realize we experience things in our lives that will impact us for the rest of our lives. Some of you that have been following me for a while know that when I was a child, and I, I have told this story before, my family, we were living in the city of Philadelphia when I was little, and My father disappeared for several days and we didn't know, you know, my brother and I, we didn't know what was going on and my mother didn't really say much. And then finally I just asked, I said, where's daddy? Why is he not here? And she said he had to go down south and take care of something really important. And I was really young at the time, and I guess she just didn't feel like I could handle what was happening. Well, I had later found out there was an incident that took place between my grandfather, who was um, working for a white family down in Irwin County, Georgia. Well, this um, family had a son. Their eldest son was an alcoholic. And when he started drinking, he would mess with the black people that were working for the family. And this one particular day, he was bothering my grandfather and you know in the south and even today you you see a lot of these people that think they can do and say whatever they want with us because see in their eyes we're not human or nobody's going to care and ladies and gentlemen that is false this is just what they falsely want to believe we know these things aren't true. We have family and we have people in our lives that love us and care about us too. But in their very limited thinking, they think we don't have these things at our disposal when we really do. So what happened was the police... And, and this is how you always know the police and the Klan are one. They came to my grandparents' house together and kicked in the door looking for my grandfather. He wasn't at the house at the time. He didn't come home because he knew they would be looking for him. And they were. I had cousins that were being raised by my grandmother and they were in the house. Well, anyway, my grandfather was not there. But his brother was in the house with my grandmother and my cousins. So they grabbed him and they took him into the woods and they beat him so bad that he was never the same. He had all kinds of um, head trauma and everything. They were trying to find out where my 
grandfather was and he wouldn't tell them. So they, they beat him severely. And he was never the same. He had slurred speech and he couldn't walk very well. One thing he was proud of, he did not give up where my grandfather was. He said he would take that beat again and wouldn't tell them a thing, and he didn't. So my father had to go down there and relocate my grandmother and grandfather. And my cousins also, because they were, you know, all living together. So he was able to do it, relocate them, and got them a, a house and everything. In fact, it was my grandfather and my uncle that paid off the house that they were relocated in. And the house was also um, in my father's name, so they would not be able to trace where my um, grandparents had relocated. So it, it was a long story, but, you know, one thing everybody knew and they liked my grandparents. So a lot of people helped in their relocation, you know, without it being real noticeable to the police or clan, but they were able to do it. You know, don't ever think these folks have more intelligence than us because they really truly don't, ladies and gentlemen. You know, look at the mess they have made since they've been in charge. This country is a mess, y'all. It, it may look okay on the surface, but when you get beyond the, the fakeified surface that you're looking at, it's really a mess. And it's never ran well at all. When you really know the truth in research and you start looking at things not the and not be taken by what you see on the surface, but start looking behind the scenes at Everything is so disorganized and they really don't know how to run businesses. If you think they know how to run businesses, pick up a Wall Street Journal and start looking at how much money they lose in a quarter or in a six-month period. You won't believe they know how to run businesses again. <laughs> and look at all of the unharvested crops in the country and crops rotting because they don't have enough immigrant workers out there or they just up and leave. See, they leave anytime they feel like ICE is coming after them. They'll leave with no notice. And when they leave, these farmers are stuck with crops they can't harvest or they just sit there and rot. Millions of dollars are lost every year on crops because they don't have the help out there to work the farm. And if you go down, even around here where I am, if you go to certain locations, you'll see they're trying to lease out part of their farm or they're trying to sell it all together and get out of farming. They're not doing as well as you think. Ladies and gentlemen, these companies don't do as well as you think. Even a failing company in America can still go get a bank loan. So on the surface, it looks like they're doing okay, but no, they're not. And we know education has never been good. It's, all, it's a whole host of problems. It, education in America is is a joke. It's not education at all. It isn't. It's trying, society just trying to get you to accept things as they are. And 
not really a true education. Not even good in medicine when you look at all of the diseases out here that they have no idea how to treat. Vaccines. And you still see the same diseases that never got eradicated. And the advances that were done in medicine is because of all the experiments that were done on slaves. It wasn't because, oh, we just had this knowledge and we knew. It wasn't like that at all, ladies and gentlemen. It's very primitive. And when you look at American medicine, you know what it is, ladies and gentlemen? It's a combination of African and Chinese medicine. They just took two different medicines and combined them together. And then it said they came up with medical science. <laughs> Woo, these people are seriously, mm. it's not what you think. It's a lot of smoke screens and lies going on in America. But let's get back to this story. We've heard about this young man, Daniel, that was found hanging in his mother's backyard and she was a Ferguson activist. Now they're trying to declare this lynching as a suicide. Well, we know with the legacy of lynchings in America, there is no way a black man is going to kill himself that way. They declare it a suicide for two reasons. Number one, they don't have to investigate anything if it's declared a suicide. Number two, these things are quite often inside jobs. The police themselves are doing it or somebody they know did it. So... Declaring it a suicide means no investigation. But black men with the history of lynching do not choose this way for suicide. In fact, suicide is very low in our community. You know, even the most unspiritual black person know not to commit suicide. It is not our thing. And why would you go through all the trouble of lynching yourselves when it's a much quicker method by just shooting yourself? Okay, and don't come with maybe they didn't have a gun. We got access to guns in this country just like any damn body else. Don't even try it. Nobody is going to choose that as a choice for suicide in our community. It's just not believable. It's only believable to the same people that are notorious for doing these things to us. And also admitting that this was a murder, then it would also mean lynchings never stopped in America, which we know they never did. Ladies and gentlemen, they never did. But I'm going to go ahead and play this video from ABC News that just recently came out. And one thing I am glad this mother is not buying what they're telling her. They're not buying it. And I hope that she continues to pursue whoever did this and get private autopsy done and and if she can do it a private investigator and try to get down to the bottom of this because he also ladies and gentlemen declaring this a suicide means she can't collect any insurance money so it's this is all done deliberately believe me it is 
but let me go ahead and play this video. Well, a Ferguson, Missouri activist found her son hanging from a tree and police are ruling it a suicide, but the mother believes it was a lynching. Now she is calling for an investigation after she says police failed to do their job. Ashley Lincoln from our CBS affiliate in St. Louis, KMOV, spoke with the mother. Suicidal? Ready to leave his mother? No. 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 Nope. A mother knows her child. That's why Melissa McKinnis wants St. Louis County Police to dig deeper into her son's death. He was not suicidal. On October 17th, she found Donye hanging from this tree in their backyard with bruises on his face. And this is her post that's been shared across America. He was in good spirits. McKenna says the 24-year-old wasn't depressed and was starting a real estate business. She believes there's more to this story. He says somebody took my son. McKinnis, a prominent Ferguson activist, told me she thinks her family is being targeted. In the last two months, she says they've been getting death threats through social media. And those threats recently showed up at her doorstep. They watched my house and when my husband and my son would approach the car, they would drive off. She also told me she never reported these threats to police. And I asked, why not? Because we felt like we had this, you know. The St. Louis County Coroner says Donye's autopsy won't be ready for weeks and they will not give news for any preliminary reports. That's my, my baby. It hurts. St. Louis County Police told us for now this remains a suicide investigation. Saying that he committed suicide? No. You're going to respect him. Yeah, she's right. You know, we know our family members. They're not walking around suicidal, y'all. These folks that are saying these things are total strangers. But they know what state your family member is in better than you. Get out of here. You know, yo, we know you better than you know yourself. Get out of here. You you don't know us better than we know ourselves. You're full of shit. You know, that kind of garbage. But I believe this mother, this was definitely a lynching. And I hope she gets the answer she's looking for. Plain and simple. And... Like she said, he was starting a business. What suicidal people do you know are going to start a business? We don't have suicidal relatives around us like that. And we know it. Always trying to insult someone's intelligence. But that's the way it is here, ladies and gentlemen. But I feel for this woman. I pray for her son, he certainly did not deserve to be murdered like that. It doesn't matter if she's an activist or not. She didn't deserve this. And this is another way of trying to silence our voices. But just always know when one fall, there's another voice that will rise. And another, and another, and another. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell. And I will see you on the next video. Peace, family.